Welcome to Undisputed with Clay and Brenton, where pretty much everything we say can probably be disputed. But uh, in this show, we have some pretty cool things going. Uh, We're going to talk about some numbers, some drivers, and a little bit of kind of what we think is going to happen for the 2019 season. So, in breaking news, Kurt Busch is going to the one car. So, what's up with that? Clay, what do you think? Uh, I don't like it. I, As a Kyle Larson fan, I think they could have found a better teammate for him. <laughs> yes! Uh, you know, and that raises the other question of where the heck is Jamie McMurray going? <laughs> is, he, is he retiring? Is he going to get a ride? I mean, I know he hasn't exactly set the world on fire, but I don't think he's so bad that he should get you know, let go. Um, I completely agree. And, you know, what's with Kurt leaving Stuart Haas? He's actually had a, you know, he, it's been up and down, but he's had a pretty good ride with them, you know. I'm surprised they let him go. So a lot of unanswered questions there. Um, and I, I just hope he's nice to Kyle Larson because Kyle's a good guy and deserves a good teammate. So, yeah, and I agree. And I, it's, Along those subject, I was kind of wondering myself too of like what happens. Um, does McDonald's go with Jamie Mac because of the whole Jamie Mac Mac, like Big Mac McDonald's thing? I don't know if he's carrying the sponsor. He must be. So and then Monster is coming with Kurt Busch. So, right. Um, I don't see McDonald's and Monster being together on the on that car. <laughs> no, too many M's. That's Kyle Busch's job, M and M's. <laughs> so too much, too much junk food, energy oh, drink. Oh yeah, fries. <laughs> it's, it's not sending the right message to that um, car. Might as well be America. flying the American flag. <laughs> <laughs> have oh man, the, have honey boo boo on the um on the bumper with her belly. Oh hanging. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, pop tarts and. Apple pie, yeah. baseballs as the as the uh, the rims. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. but it, no, it's interesting. So because we got we don't know where Jamie Mack or McDonald's are going. We know that Kurt Busch is there. We yeah, like you said, why why they let him go? I don't know. Um, so Maybe take the forty one. Right, right. There's an open spot. I wonder. I wonder how many. What we have to look up at some point too, and maybe some of our viewers might be able to tell us if somebody wants to find the comment. We would appreciate it. Uh, let us know what all the contracts links are. If people know what contracts um, are out there, if that's public knowledge, and how many uh, are out there, and like for how long, because I would imagine sometime at some point, like you said, Kyle Larson, he's a nice guy. He's got to get in some better equipment. There's gonna got. There's gonna be a point where he's got to realize that he's. In order to do better, he's got to move. It'll just be who has an open ride for him and if if it'll be a better ride. JGR is pretty good with the Toyotas, but I don't know if he'll want to switch brands. So you yeah. kind of look at the Hendrix camp. He's go so he's, it, It's the only place he, he belongs. Um, I I can appreciate his, uh, you know, relationship with Chip Ganassi and, you know, he seems to be faithful to the team. He's a team player, and it says a lot about his character. But yeah. um, if Rick Hendrick had or ever does offer him a ride in one of his cars, he's got to take it. Um, yeah. I, I don't see Bowman. You know, No offense to Alex Bowman. It seems like a really cool guy, but he's not a great race car driver. I don't see Alex Bowman being a long-term uh, fixture at uh, Hendrick Motorsports. So... I think you're going to see that 88 car come available um, in the near future. And this is also going to be a pivotal year for uh, William Byron. Uh, in our last show, yes. I said I have high hopes for him uh, with, you know, Jack and Alice coming on board. And I, I think this is going to be a breakout year for him, but if it's not, I don't see William Byron being a long time uh, member of Hendrick Motorsports because yeah, they kind of took a leap of faith on giving him the 24 car after, you know, coming off of one breakout season. Yeah. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of NFL players, great running backs, great wide receivers that have a huge breakout first year in 2017. And then when 2018 starts, they're absolute garbage. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm not going to go so far to say that William Byron is garbage, but um, he was not the William Byron in 2018 that we saw in 2017. So yeah. I think um, – Rick Hendrick's going to need to keep a close eye on the 88 and the 24 cards. Cause I mean, Johnson is kind of, I mean, he's the goat of the team. Yeah. <laughs> they're, yep. they're not going to go him until he retires. And Chase Elliott is their breakout star, but 24 and 88 are um, kind of the dead weights of the team right now. So should yeah. Kyle Larson ever be offered a ride in one of those two cars? I think he should have gotten the 24 car at the end of 2014 when Jeff Gordon retired. That's my personal beef with the Hendrick Motorsports team. <laughs> but I completely agree with that. Should, should the opportunity present itself a second time, he needs to take it. Yep. So, um, yep. I don't like him being on the team with Kurt Busch, and I think he needs to get away from Chip Ganassi racing altogether and find himself in a better team because he's a heck of a race car driver, and it's a total waste of talent right now. I completely agree. That is uh that is all sound logic. I'm I'm a hundred percent on board for that. Something oh, and you put you said everything that I wanted to say. I was trying to figure out too, um one thing I wanted to add to it was that, you know, I don't I don't see why all of these um teams are spending so much time and effort breeding up these drivers to put them into good equipment right off the bat when you look at William Byron you're right he's not garbage but it's it's hard to say that he's done the number 24 justice when he's a rookie running a an iconic number like that um you you would kind of think that some of those lower teams that would try to you know we unfortunately we've kind of made things backward where instead of lower teams where you kind of proved yourself in a car and move your way up the cars rather than, you know, the team like a Rick Hendrick or a Joe Gibbs is literally breeding the guys from ARCA all the way up to cup. That just, there, there's just too much, too much riding on that as an investment to, to not have it work out. And they're, they're realizing it's not working out. Um, so I think, I think it's one of the issues that we talked about in our earlier episodes of just being, these, these guys are too young. It's not saying that they can't do it, but for the results that that are needed by the sports for the sponsors for the for the teams. Personally, as a fan, I don't care who's winning. I just I want to yeah. see a race. I want to see who wins it. Um, yeah. But yeah. for the for the sport as NASCAR as a whole, and for the teams, they need wins. So if you're not performing, you would figure you would do the best thing you could do to get somebody to, to win, thus hiring somebody like Kyle Larson or trying to take them from another team to get them on your team because they are an experienced driver. It's it's really sad to see that they're not even attempting that. Um, they're just signing rookies or you know waiting for a contract to expire and the driver to pretty much have nothing open to them before they'll scoop them up. So... Well, you know, one of the things that made Jeff Gordon such a legend in the sport was that he was a breakout driver. And, you know, he came in to, you know, a car that didn't have big shoes to fill, but, you know, he was coming onto a a really large stage with a lot of legends still racing. Yeah. And the way he broke into that elite group is what's so remarkable about him and that doesn't happen often no. so you know just because you put in, in a car that's had a great history doesn't mean he's gonna you know bam take off right you know, yep jeff jeff gordon was i'm not gonna say once in a lifetime but that doesn't happen often no, so, um, just putting a guy in a car, it doesn't mean he's going to become Jeff Gordon. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. And that's that's what they've got to start kind of, I think, balancing out is they've got to start looking at 
the drivers as a whole, their personalities, and, you know, cultivating the ability for people to become accustomed to a driver with a number with a sponsor. You know, like Denny Hamlin, we all know he's the 11. He's been in the 11 for such a long time with FedEx. Like Jimmy right. Johnson, Lowe's, 48, Jeff Gordon, 24, DuPont. I mean, um, Mark Martin, Valvoline, number six. Like, these are all just kind of common associations with all these drivers jumping cars and numbers all the time it you know there's not enough time for them to get good so you know it took Joey Logano almost 10 years now before he got his championship he started it probably younger than Jeff Gordon was he was younger than Jeff Gordon was but you look at that situation and I I don't really I don't put him in anywhere near Jeff Gordon's shoes but the, he's a NASCAR champion now based on the formats and everything but it took him 10 years to do it. You know, the, it was not Jeff Gordon style where you won a bunch of races your first season. And so I, I just looking at that Joey Logano scenario versus Jeff Gordon scenario, it's like these teams have got to start realizing they got to stop. They got to stop trying to breed these kids from like infancy up to be race car drivers. Cause it's not producing the results that I think that they think they're getting. So I wouldn't at all be surprised to see Joey Logano be like Matt Kenseth in the sense that he's good, but he may be a one-time championship winner. Sure, that's sure. Kenseth was back in '03. Um, that's just that's just my my thoughts. But uh, Keselowski has had a hard time finding his way back to championship form, and I don't see Logano being any different. Maybe yeah. Anymore. No, I agree with that too. So, well, we appreciate you all watching on this episode. Uh, we're keeping it short and sweet lately. We've been trying to do really good in these whole 10 minutes. Um, hopefully we've got some good in-depth topics that you guys like. Uh, if there's anything, any recommendations you guys have, let us know. Um, we'll try to add in some of your dialogue or topics and we'll bring it up in the next show. So if you want a shout out, leave us a comment. But uh, thanks for watching this episode of Undisputed with Clay and Brenton, and we'll see you on the next one.